that is on the morning Avocado, Avocado channel on the 14th of July 2023 called How Much I Weigh Now Spicy Noodles Mukbang. He just has to buy food and he has to have 10,000 calories. Like he can't stop eating and he just, he's embarrassed to go back eating because he told all you guys that he was going to actually lose weight. And <laughs> My energy is so drained. <sighs> My neck is itchy for some fucking reason. Yes, woman who whooped my ass and freaked it. I did not whoop your ass. He came from you, so it's part of you. <laughs> I thought you weren't complaining. I love you. I love you too. Um, question. Yeah. Because I didn't get the band-aid off when you were here. I think Austin just got home. Go. Go what? If I catch him before he goes to bed, is it okay if I have him help me get the band-aid off? Yeah. Alright, because he won't let me get to his arm. <laughs> okay. Are you okay? Yes, I am physically fine. Mentally, okay. mentally, I'm trying to understand how he had the torsion to struggle against me and the male nurse, as well as the doctor. While I was holding him at While that. he was holding, being held. I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> Babies are slippery little suckers, don't you know that? No, I didn't know that. <laughs> Yeah, they had to do an x-ray when I was a baby, and it took five people to hold me down. You're enjoying this. <laughs> you wanted to go. <laughs> That's not what I mean. You're enjoying seeing me getting my ass whooped. Well, I can only enjoy it now because I was too upset at the moment. <laughs> You were too upset at the moment because of something I did or because of the situation? The situation, him screaming as loud as he was and getting shots and blood and stuff. Okay. Believe it or not, that can bother people. I know it can when bother people. Oh. When I was in Arizona and they first had to, um... Draw Isana's blood. 
myth about punch the nurse because he made uh, the nurse made the baby cry. Uh. I forgot to look. What game are you playing? Monster Hunter World. Okay, you haven't played that one in a while. No, I play it. I play it off camera sometimes. Okay, you haven't played that one live in a while. Yes, that is correct. And I thought you said that you passed out. I did, and I got back up. The exact moment that I, I got rolled over by a Radabon. The exact moment that I passed out would be about 10 to 5 minutes after I got into the house and laid in my bed. And then I got <laughs> back up. I am up now. See, that's not the definition of passing out. Passing out means that you didn't just like close your eyes for 10 minutes. Passed out means you were out. I'm surprised you're not passed out. Mm, I'm thinking about it. Mm, thinking about it. Well, I had to finish drying the clothes and make the bed and chase a toddler that didn't want to go to bed. Uh-huh. And eat and feed him. What you're saying is I didn't do a good enough job. You shut your overloving mouth. I wanted to fall asleep in the kitchen, but knew that we needed to eat. See, so I did do a good job. Oh, so I did do a good job. Paul, yes. I thought you said I tweaked you anyway, so wouldn't it be I that did the good job? It can be a team effort. <laughs> well, no, Daddy's trying to take the credit. Daddy's trying to take the credit, you said. Hello, Radabon. Don't move. Come and guess face. what he did when I said that you were trying to take the credit? What did he do? While attached to one side, he covered up the other. Mm. He's trying to hide them from you. I'm not even there. He doesn't care. <laughs> Saying that was it, you didn't have anything else you wanted to say? Sorry, I got distracted. You got distracted. Yes, I just realized that what Harvey posted in Relaxation Lounge was a video. Yes, it is a video. <laughs> now the comments afterward make more sense about the standing bed. <laughs> I'm like, but it's a bed warmer. It's a video, Star. It's a video. Watch the video. I really wish I knew why my phone wasn't connecting to the Wi-Fi. I didn't want to pay for unlimited data. Oh, did you work out your phone situation, baby? No, that's what I literally just said. Oh. Somebody wasn't paying attention. 
I'm sorry. Then again, with how much Zulu was screaming, I don't blame you if you can't hear very well. I was trying my best to pay attention. You're good. Trying to roll backwards. Dang it, if I can't get the Wi-Fi situation fixed, I might have to switch back to unlimited wi or in a, la 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 unlimited data. Okay. My phone just renewed today, I think, today or yesterday. And granted I did probably watch videos and stuff while we were at the doctor's office, but I've already used one out of five gigs of data. How did you manage that? Good question, give me just a second and I'll actually look it up. You must be talking about your game. Yes. Be lucky I'm not talking about you. Imagine what would happen if I was talking about you. The Huey, 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 Huey. Well, considering you were the one that could barely stand up afterward, I think your ass was the one that was beaten. In my defense, I was in shock. <laughs> also, I wasn't the one that was on my back. Mm. Oh my goodness, Carl. Can't oh. saying stuff like that get you banned? No. What would get me banned is if I was more explicit. Mm, and I don't know where that boundary lies. It lies with descriptive scientific terms. <laughs> well, I mean, you were, you were on your back for a little while. Yes, I was. And I whooped your ass. I will concede, but I got you first. How? I was the better kisser. Alright, but I'm pretty sure this all started back at that movie theater a long time ago, so who got oh, me first? Oh, oh, okay. I see. I see where we're going. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> hmm. <laughs> I mean, movie theater, staircase, um, bathrooms. I can think of a lot of places where I had the one over on you. Now, 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 who's being too descriptive? I ain't say she doodles. You didn't say she doodles. You saying she doodles without saying she doodles. <laughs> Is another point. Nobody ever needs to wonder why I picked you. Because <laughs> hmm. I'm just about as crazy as you are. Debatable. 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 On the just about or the crazy? Just about. Are you saying that I'm as crazy as you? You can be. I swear they used a different band-aid on his elbow. No, uh, actually, maybe. They, the male nurse might have used a different band-aid on him than female nurse that put the needles in his leg. Because this one's like not wanting... He pulled the other two off himself. I mean, they weren't necessarily really good band-aids. No, but this one is. You let me start. You here. Oh, no, don't start that. Band-Aid lock, he's a very, very unhappy camper. Was he already picking at it? No, he couldn't really get to the one on his elbow and he wouldn't let me get it. And then I grabbed the corner just right and when he snatched his arm, it started to pull off. So then I kept at it. And the, the, the sad thing is, you know how they say, like, you rip a Band-Aid off in one go? Yeah. He wouldn't let me do that. So the poor guy kept getting hurt. Okay. And I am confused at Harvey again. Why? Because of what you just posted in Relaxation Lounge. I don't know what you posted in Relaxation Lounge. But when you get a chance, when you're not getting beat up by whatever you're playing against, go we'll watch it. Bold of you to assume I'm getting beat up. <laughs> oh, how do you me... know? I'm sticking a hammer deep inside that ass. Mm-hmm, I bet you are. You gotta beat something. Since you got beat so bad. I am having fun playing my video game, so I will not give that a reaction. But you're giving it a reaction by not giving it a reaction? Girl, that talk is not gonna work on me. I taught you that move. Ah! Child, hold on! I just wanted my phone charger! Help. I'm not there to help. Good luck. <laughs> People in the chat are going like, how cruel. If you knew what she did to me. If you knew what she did to me. Only you knew what she did to me, chat. 
Only you know. I don't do anything to you that you don't ask for a hundred times. Ask for or consent to by via -a -V my fat mouth running and you trying to shut it. Okay, correction. You don't ask for it, you beg for it. Bold of you. Also, correct. Can't make me look silly. I'll make you look silly. Yes, you're correct, Harvey. In his defense, he's not here to help me. There is a distance barrier of across town. But he can still help me. He'll figure it out. I send you my support through the airwaves. Mwah. <laughs> there you go. Suey. 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 Dee -dee -dee -dee. Yeah, your, your son, um, I tried to get up to get my charger and he shoved me back over so we could go back to drinking milk. I wonder where you got that move from. <laughs> I don't know. You certainly didn't get it from me. Bullshit. I'm never so aggressive. Oh, really? Really? I remember that. Because if you're not aggressive, then you... I didn't say that I wasn't aggressive. I said I'm never nearly that aggressive. Mm-hmm. You're right. You're not aggressive because I'm aggressive. Yes, you. you are. You are 100% indeed. You like it, though. Yes, I do. And you told me something new today that I got to keep in mind on how to be aggressive. What was that? You know what you told me before you ran back into your house. Well, I guess the world will never know. So I don't think you want them to, Carl. They don't need to. However, we do look forward to all of you all drawing porn of this. Wait, drawing porn of what? Us. The, the Morticia and Gomez art paintings are coming, sweetie. Wait, why is somebody drawing a picture of me? That's called fan art, sweetie. But, but... But, but... I have no fans. You have fans. They're fans of me. You're with me. Therefore, they become fans of you. Especially as you continue to be such a very lovely character. <laughs> Harvey said that you overestimate his artistic abilities. You underestimate your artistic ability. I had completely forgotten I was supposed to be looking up where I used all my data. And I know. Uh, Harvey, huh? I know. 
Harvey says, fair enough, I guess, although I am in the beginnings of learning how to do sprite work so I can make a modded character for a fighting game I play often. Within the last 24 hours, I've used 639 megabytes of data. Which oh. I <laughs> Um, hold on. Um, top four culprits are Facebook, Twitter, Discord, and then Google itself. Mm, all of those are likely culprits. I don't remember being on Facebook as much as it says I was. Facebook data theft is what we call a vampire service if you leave it on it will slowly drain any resources it wants to get its hands on it says i use 358 in facebook alone uh-huh mm -hmm. that's about the amount that you lose through idling it can be just as simple as having the application up and not closed in the background but usually when I'm not using something, I exit out of it in the what in the tabs. It can still happen. It's a greedy bitch. Uh. It likes to go hungry, hungry hippo like you do on my linguine. <laughs> I do like spaghetti and meatballs. Hey yo. <laughs> what? I bought the sauce for spaghetti. Hey, yo, she's got no chill. I don't know what you're talking about. Sure. I have sausage, and I have hamburger meat that I can put in my spaghetti. She... And I have parmesan cheese, and other type of cheese, and... No, it was mozzarella I bought. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Harvey said gonna base it off a certain German cyber from a certain manga anime series. The problem is finding what type of archetype of fighting character I want to be the primary focus for his moves. Hmm. And when the hell did I become hard to... Yeah. When the hell did it become hard for me to read? What makes you say that? Because I feel like I pause every three words and when I used to be able to read like pages like cool. Out loud with no problem, know. but not a cutter. It's Basil! Run for your lives, boys and girls! This is me to Oh no, are you coming? Oh, he came my ass! So something beating your ass? No, but he definitely flew out of the sky and tried to mount me. <laughs> and I'll do it again. I'll do it hanging from the sky. She has no chill chat. <laughs> Well, you know I figured out how to float. Figuring out how to float. You know I figured out how to float. 
chat. My wife's trying to drain me. <laughs> when I do. When I do, she says. I didn't do anything. That was not that kind of war. That was me timing the monster's war. Oh. Now begins the. Now wow. begins his bush jihad bombing. Harvey said, I'm thinking maybe a grappler with a mix of rushdown and a head of zoner. Uh huh. And I think I remembered why I could read fine in school, but I have trouble reading the screen chat. Because in school, I'd always read ahead. It's kind of hard to read ahead when I'm reading live. I mean, everybody reads ahead from time to time. Please tell me he flew away. He flew away. Good. Zulu, do you have to lay on my face? Yes, it is integral to his feeding. Here. You were waiting for this man at the door? It's like that? Bro, you fly. What do you mean? Why are you waiting in his den? Maybe it's waiting in its den because it wants... Never mind. What does he want, Star? What does he want? Say it! <laughs> Maybe it wants to... Oh, damn it. The words were just there. Uh, damn it, what's that word? Ow! Oh. Ambush. That's the word. It's hiding in its den because it wants to ambush the next person that comes in. That's what I'm saying. He was waiting for his ass at the door. Uh-huh. I'd be waiting for your ass at the door. That's a different kind of waiting for my ass, first of all. Secondly, hey yo! <laughs> That is a mighty pretty ass you got. Chat, my ass does not feel safe. <laughs> <laughs> but you got a pretty ass. You got a pretty ass. Let me fuck it. Yes, let me fuck it. No! I'm not ready. <laughs> but we got three different types of ease to do stuff. Shit, my ass is not safe. <laughs> Harvey 
Harvey, before we ever said got to that far, said already said Ayo, and now he's typing again. <laughs> Poor Harvey, the things he hears. I mean, I got this type and that type and this one of. <laughs> You've got such a pretty ass. It's, it's a shame it goes to waste. Can I play bongos on it to warm it up? Oh, I think you're ignoring me now. I'm not ignoring you. I'm very focused. Okay. Basil made me miss my carbs on my great Garros. So I'm whooping his ass extra hard! <laughs> Harvey says that he is baffled. What are you baffled by? Probably that somebody's possessed your wife and she's talking really weird and naughty and stuff. Nope, this is her. That's me all day. That's her. No, I'm not naughty. Tell that lie to somebody who believe it. It's sweet and innocent, baby. Sweet and innocent is when you try to play with my ass cheeks. And more. Mother, I cannot go in there yet. Harvey said that he's baffled by how casual I am about all of this. You really shouldn't be surprised. You see, Harvey, the thing is, I'm only casual when it's coming out of my mouth. When it's coming out of his, it's a different story. Call me casual when it comes out of your mouth. When it comes out of my mouth, I'm not in my pearl, is just a fiend. He is a muffo maniac. I am excuse you? My wife hasn't watched Dexter's Laboratory chat. No, it's just been a very, 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 very long time. Dexter's father loves muffins. And Wait, what? Dexter... Dexter's Laboratory. Dexter's mom was telling Dexter and Dee Dee how Dexter's dad loves muffins. He's a muffin fiend, a muffomaniac. But he... I don't remember Dexter having parents. The fuck? They were an integral part of his... He... A lot of the jokes of the show, actually. You can look it up on YouTube under muffomaniac. Yeah, I have to do it next time I'm at your house so I have Wi-Fi. Okay. Or at work tomorrow. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. You know, I really don't remember the last time I watched Dexter's Liberatory. How do you remember this shit from so long ago? Because it was my childhood. And it was mine too, and I don't remember it. Uh, Harvey said he gets the joke. Oh, come on. I was trying Harvey to find the hell. Gets the joke. All I ever gets confused. Don't worry. It makes sense the next time I can be a muffin maniac. Mm. Tie you up and tickle you. If you do that, I will be forced to use my final resort. But you gotta get out of the bonds first. It will not take me that long to get out of the bonds. And then when I get my hands on you, Star, 
when I catch you, star. Star when I catch you. When I catch you, star. Star when I catch you. When I catch you, star. Star when I catch you. When I catch you, star. Star when I catch you. When I catch you, star. Are you a broken record? No. Everybody's gonna ask, when's the baby do? Oh my god. You wouldn't do that. Try me. Look at your bank account, baby. You wouldn't do that right now. I know I wouldn't do that right now. But that doesn't mean I won't do it next week. <laughs> See how surprised she is, chat? She doesn't believe the depth of my love. No, I don't believe you would go back on what you said. Because you said, until we know 100, 150% that we are financially stable to have another child, we won't even try for that one. But it would be funny. You do? It, it would... would be funny to get me pregnant? No, it will be funny telling the story of how you got pregnant. Yeah, daddy don't know when to shut his mouth. Really? Daddy don't know when to shut his mouth. I see. Not Mommy pushed daddy. Pushed him several times against the wall. Held dad down. Held his legs up. And said, "Hi ho, Silver! Away!" No, none, none of that. None of that sounds like something I would do. Really, would not hold me against the wall. Um, that would be aggressive. I'm not aggressive. You just said you were aggressive. So who am I supposed to believe? <laughs> Your question is, who do you believe out of me or myself? I don't know. Do you think I'm aggressive? I think you want to be aggressive. I think you be aggressive. Harvey said, and then she ran into my knife. She ran into my knife 50 times. Yeah, but he knife. put knife in quotes. Yeah, knife is what I call my dick. That is not what you call your dick. That's right. We call it your god. No, we call it little man. Oh, really? That was trouble. Oh, really? That was trouble. Oh, really? Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> Alright, remember that next time. No head. But all you are is head. <laughs> I'm in trouble. Harvey said not, nah, it's called the monolith. Harold, why can't I get like an inch of space to myself? Because he conglomerizes every inch of your body. I'm glad you got the pizza on the car because I never saw you grab it. I think I grabbed it on my way in. Mm. The second time. Mm. I should probably set my alarm. You should do that.
isolate them. That's okay. That's what you get for making me waste my Gyarados body. It's crazy. I wanted to sleep earlier, but I had to take you home, and now I don't want to sleep. You know, that means more Bellatro. Maybe, possibly. No, he's home. Okay. So, you know, no, if you ask him, he might be able to take over uh, advisement duties. But if you don't want to play it again until I'm there, I understand. I thought that was mine and your thing, so why would you want him helping me play? He's knowledgeable about the game, too. That's because he play he watches um, gameplay more than he plays it. Okay. What have you been doing you watch me play it? Wait, I'm supposed to be watching you play it? Yes. Oh. A lot of learning about video games can come from watching other people play. I listen to you play it, does that count? Yes, but that means you actually have to be paying attention to what I'm saying. Oh. Whoa. I'm supposed to pay attention to you? <laughs> you know how quickly I am leaning on saying no head for a month? Hey, giving or receiving? Both. A now. What you mean, A now? Punishment. That's no problem. Punishment fits the crime. No, no it does not. <laughs> really? How doesn't it? Because I said so. Because you said so. And you know what's funny? What? If somebody is actually curious enough... <laughs> To wonder which one I'm actually more upset about, they'd probably get it wrong. If I have any more female audience members in my chat, they know which one would be more upsetting. Really? Yes. But I thought I was weird. Yes, but do you know how many weird girls in my audience also fully understand? Yes, sis, me too. Several of them. One of them is Saf. Trust me, the women in my audience would know which one would be more upsetting. I know which one would be more upsetting. No shit, you know. You're my husband. Uh-huh. I'm going to smack you upside the head. I just got to figure out which one. Two months. <laughs> Abuse comes with a price, sweetie. Are you willing to pay it? I'll just wait till you're sleeping. <laughs> oh! Really? I'll wait till you're sleeping, then I'll get my licks in. Get your licks in. Do you hear, <laughs> do you hear this, chat? Cuffing your virgin ears! <laughs> what? Am I not allowed to use... What is that phrase? The... Double entendres? <laughs> You're allowed to use double entendres as long as I'm allowed to use double entendres. So you I'm always use double entendres. Correct. So am I allowed to use you? <laughs> oh. <laughs> now she's saying, "Hey yo." <sighs> I was so hey, yo. I didn't even get to say it. I look at the same show. Go ahead and send me a picture of your face when you did it. My face is super red, and you can't see it because the room's dark. Yeah, but I can imagine how wide your mouth got when you went... <gasps> <sighs> well, you like it when my mouth is wide anyway. 
nice and circular, but not that kind of circular. A little bit oblong. With my tongue hanging out. Yeah, it's actually hotter when it's your lips. Huh? It's actually hotter when it's your lips. Oh. When my lips are hanging out? When you look at me and you slightly have your lips agape and you do that thing where you drop your jaw and you're like, ah! And you look at me in shock. That's hotter. Uh-huh. I'll show you hotter later. Please do. Remember, I know how to put that dress in sports mode. Okay. Or should I say club mode? If somebody tries to approach you like that at the club, you know I'm gonna kill him, right? But you like it when I show off my body. Yes. I do. However, you know if somebody asks you to put it in a sports mode, I'm gonna kill him, right? <laughs> I'd be having it in sports mode for you. Well, but of course, sweetie. And then I called it club mode because it made more sense with how short it was. We don't need you to know about what happens in those clubs. I said it's like a painting in the Louvre. They can look, but they can't touch. No, they're not, not even allowed to look. Everyone. They're not even allowed to look. They have to paint me first. Oh, really? <laughs> really? Hey Harvey, let me know when he comes back to the computer because I think he walked away.
<laughs> so Harvey, I know I do it too sometimes, but why do you watch it and respond through Discord instead of through YouTube or Twitch? I will agree that it's easier whenever I try to type through YouTube, it pauses the videos. My phone is weird. And you never type anything weird that would get blocked by YouTube. Stupid YouTube. Oh, stupid weird censorship policies. On different platforms anyway. Between my ass and that, that's bad. I had to leave the room at some point to go get her, to go talk her out. I'm sorry. Sorry. You're good. I knew you left the room. Thank you, Harvey. <laughs> and because I never know whenever you leave the room, because you know I'm not watching the stream. I asked Harvey to let me know when you left or when you came back. <laughs> I see. Uh huh. Oh, that's right, because I was going to tell you, he said your comment about they have to pay before they can even look is just like the Louvre. They have to look before they, I mean, pay before they can look. I mean, if they look, I'm going to take their eyes, though. The payment is their eyes. They can come appreciate the art, but how are they going to look at it with no eyes? Carl, 
What? You want me to buy dresses, and you want to buy dresses for me for people to see me. Why Correct. would you gouge their eyes out if you're intentionally buying the clothing that they will see me in? Because you see, if they're men, they don't get to see that for free. The cost is their eyes. If they can somehow see without their eyes, congratulations, you have achieved the next level. Well, if you're going to go around gouging people's eyes out, I'm not going to wear the clothes that you buy me. I'm not. I am. You realize I'm joking, right? Or am I? I'm, I'm, I'm joking. <laughs> Perhaps if my wife cannot tell if I am clearly memeing, it is probably safe to assure her that, sweetheart, I am indeed memeing. Okay, I'm just trying to figure out what dress I want to buy next. Or if I want to buy a swimsuit. It would swimsuit. Because if I'm going to swim over at their house, I'd rather not have a two-piece. How, huh? how about a revealing one-piece? I have curves. No, thank you. <laughs> Don't you love me? <laughs> what? Don't you love me? I don't need to show off my curves. Why not? You're a grown woman. Because like the nurse said, the curves are what got us into this... The curves are what will give us another baby. Is that so wrong? <laughs> Carl. Star. Just wait till I get the nerve up to start dancing again. I am waiting for the day for you to tell me we want to go dancing. I didn't say we were going dancing. I said I was just going to dance. Oh, so you're going to dance on the pole for me. I mean, I probably got one in the backyard somewhere. Actually, I know I got some in the front yard. <sighs> the day I see my wife pull her weight up and throw it around on a pole is the day that I know that Jesus is real. <laughs> because I am going to fly into her ass crack chat! <laughs> well, my I was starting to debate on learning how to do that until you said that. They will never be able to unstick my tongue. Out of my ass crack, girl? Yes. No, stay away from my ass. Oh, now, see, it's okay when you do it, but I do it, it's wrong. When did I stick my tongue in your butt? <clears throat> I did not. <clears throat> Am I forgetting something? Uh, Star, I love you, and I'm not going to put you out there like that on the internet. <laughs> what? What do you mean, what? I don't remember, do I? I'm so confused. I am simply not going to say where you have stuck one of your digits. Oh, digits. Okay. I thought you were talking about my tongue. I was like, I do not remember this. I thought I was really losing my memory. Again, Star, I love you, and I'm not going to put you out there like that. But technically, didn't you already by saying that you're not going to do it? No. That is not the same thing. Mm-hmm. It's technically implied. No. I don't have to heavily imply shit. Mm. 
Okay. You're yawning. Damn it, you made me yawn. The infection has spread successfully. Nope, it's only spread successfully if I have yawns. If anyone else in chat yawns and says that they yawn. Mm. You know what sucks? You know what sucks, sweetie? Other than you. I was gonna say other than me. Um, the fact that when I dropped you off, I told myself that if I didn't fall asleep, I was gonna go back to cleaning. But because I have to lay down to put the baby to sleep, I don't want to get out of bed to go back to cleaning. Uh huh. Kiss my butt. I will. Again. Bet you will. I can't wait until there's people that are like, Ew, my god, I can't believe you're flirting with her like that over the internet. What kind of man says that kind of thing to his wife? The kind that has his wife do the kinds of things she does to be shit at. You don't make me do any of that. Exactly. But there's gonna be people there that are gonna be really, really jealous. Actually, some of it you try to tell me not to do. Sometimes. Like making you twitch. Now, sweetie, when you just, when you tickle me the way that you try to often. That causes a Charlie horse that radiates through my side. Oh no, I was talking about the other overstimulation twitch. You know, when I finish my dessert and want to lick the bowl clean. Hey, yo! <laughs> what? I like ice cream. I have ice cream in the freezer. I know you have it in the freezer. I didn't touch it, but I know you have it. Mm -hmm. I stare at it, because I'm like, do I want it or do I not want it? You do that to a lot of things. I do it to you more than you realize. More than I realize? Maybe. Why did I hear the chair move when you said that? Because I lean forward. For the game or for the camera? Both. Yeah. How long are hot dogs good for after you cook them and put them back in the fridge? I would say about a week. If you want a hard limitation, four days. Damn it. How long were they out, Star? 
I was off Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, so I think I cooked them Monday. If they smell and taste funky, don't finish them. Damn it. That's why I wasn't even sure about cooking the whole pack at one time, but I wanted chili dogs. But because of Zulu, I only took hot dogs to work, not chili dogs. Unfortunate. Mm. Now I'm scared to even go check them because if I open them and they stink, I don't want to get sick. Beat that button, Carl. Beat that button. I'll be you. Uh, sure you will. One of these days, Star, very soon, you're gonna find that those ready remarks are gonna get you exactly what you're asking for. Have you been decreasing my tally, by the way? Yes. Better be. I am not evil and heartless.
I really gotta accident stop accidentally slaying them. Large clumps of my hair. Lord.
<clears throat> That's not great. I need more carapace. However, I need to watch the update in full. I only got to listen to part of the live stream. I need to watch the POE announcements in full chat. My wife has disappeared. Dirt, maggots, and ghosts. Our job is to keep them where they belong. It's your first night, so you'll need this. A ghostly lantern for ghastly tinkering. You'll learn to peer into the souls of the dead. You'll learn how to post them. Meet me in the necropolis. You can pilfer shiny things from a corpse. But you can pilfer glorious things from a soul. I need a grave digger. <sighs> At least we're getting an overhaul of fucking scarabs. Thank fucking Christ. The job's hard. Is good. What do you say? Hi, I'm Chris Wilson from Grinding Gear Games. Welcome to our live stream. We have a busy lineup today with announcements for Path of Exile 2, as well as the exclusive reveal of Path of Exile Necropolis, which launches on March 29th. For the first time ever, we'll be releasing this expansion. March 29th, boys! Simultaneously on all platforms, PC, Mac, and console. Twitch drops are enabled on today's live stream, so make sure you follow the instructions below in order to claim your suffering back attachment. Today's stream will start with Path of Exile 2, which Jonathan will show you our latest announcements. Mark will then take you on a deep dive into the new Path of Exile Necropolis Challenge League, which launches in one week. He'll cover the league mechanics, its deep crafting system, large in-game changes, some improvements to the core Path of Exile campaign, and finally some quality of life features. We'll then show you our new support packs, and we'll head into a live Q&A session where Ziggy D will ask us questions from Twitch chat. After the live stream, we'll drop the full patch notes. Hey guys, it's time to chat about PoE2 again. It's only been a few months since we talked about the mercenary, and yet even since then, a huge amount has changed. When we announced the mercenary, we also showed off a lot of the new capabilities that our engine has around animation and character control. Moving while shooting was a huge deal for us, but there were a lot of other more subtle things going on to make it feel good too. Well, in recent times, we've only been showing off new character classes, but one thing I've been really excited about is to go back and apply all the new ideas and capabilities that we have to our old classes too. Today, I'd like to show off the Ranger, and I hope that you guys like what you see. I've lived in this forest all my life, and if there's one thing I've learned, it's that a Ranger must never miss. A beast will hunt you. But it is the cruelty of man I fear. There is no truly escaping the Count's justice. Your sentence is to be hanged from the neck until dead. Let your souls be the first ones, and your bodies be the last. Hmm. This exile has changed me. No more running. No more fear. You won't get away this time. Back riding on a drawer, really? Let this be a warning, Jimor. I'm coming for you next. Let the hunt begin. When we started to work on the Ranger, we knew we had to make a class with high agility. The dream of fast bow gameplay is legless, so that's what we wanted to deliver. The starting point is moving while shooting a bow. Any kind of basic arrow skill can be fired while moving, with a movement penalty. This immediately gives you a lot more freedom on the battlefield. Here, I'm starting each battle with a poison burst arrow to poison groups of enemies, then using a lightning arrow to arc lightning around larger packs. For even more mobility, we also have a variety of skills that involve vaulting around the battlefield too. This is Frost Escape. Using it jumps backwards and shoots a freezing arrow at the ground. It's really useful if monsters close on you and you need to get away. Once you've landed, if monsters were frozen, it'd be nice to have somebody to take advantage of that extra time. This is where Snipe comes in. Snipe is a skill shot that you need to charge up and release at exactly the right time. If you land the right timing, Snipe is guaranteed to produce a critical strike and does a small AOE as well, so it's a great finisher. You can also move while shooting arrow rain skills too. This skill is a lightning rod. It shoots an arrow into the air that sticks into the ground and does a small AOE. Once the rods are in the ground though, they attract any arcs of lightning that are nearby, causing them to explode again. This means you can stack up a bunch of lightning rods on the ground and bounce lightning between them, doing way more damage. 
Now this takes care of packs pretty well, but for bigger enemies, I'd like to have something that's gonna enhance my damage output too. This skill is Storm Call Arrow. Using it sticks an arrow into an enemy. After a short period of time, a lightning bolt comes from the sky and strikes them. This has a high chance to shock them, and shock enemies take 30% more damage from all sources. If something big walks along, it's a good idea to throw one of these at them first to enhance your damage before following up with the other combo. Now, if I really want to enhance this combo, there are a couple of things I could do using our support gem system. Skills and Path of Exile are granted by items called skill gems. Each skill gem has colored sockets in it, and these sockets are for other items called support gems. Support gems modify your skills, and it's where a huge amount of customization of your character comes. Interesting. So instead of it being you have items and you stick those things in those items, instead you're only allowed to have sockets in the items equal to whatever the socket opportunities for the gem is. Comes from. First, I'm going to take this multiple projectile support gem. I could add it to my lightning arrow, and it would fire multiple arrows. This would increase the number of targets I can hit, but that isn't the effect that I'm after. If I add it to my lightning rod skill instead, then when I fire it, I get a nice group of rods. This means that I don't have to spend as much time setting up before I can use it with my lightning arrow combo. I might also add faster projectiles to make the lightning rods land faster too. Now next up I'm going to grab this chain support gem. Chaining causes many effects to repeat on new targets when you hit them. If I add it to my lightning arrow, it will cause the arcs that come out of the lightning arrow to strike even more targets, rippling along my line of lightning rods for huge amounts of damage. Now I think we can use support gems to improve Stormcall Arrow as well. Let's start simple. I'm going to chuck less duration on here. This will cause the lightning from the sky to strike a bit faster. Next up we have a support called Shock Proliferation. This support makes it so that any enemies shocked by the skill will also have the shock jump to nearby enemies, meaning they'll take the extra damage as well. It's just a chance to proc, so it's not going to proc on every single pack, but when it does, a pack will go down ultra quick. Another useful empowering skill is Barrage. Barrage is one of the rare cooldown skills in Theory 2. It enhances whatever your next attack is to fire three times. With what we have here, I think it might be a good idea to use it with a lightning arrow. It'll generate three times as many lightning explosions. You could also use it at just the right moment with Snipe, or any number of other skills depending on what effect you need more of right now. It's very versatile and can be used in a range of situations. Now, even as mobile as the Ranger is, it's still very useful to slow monsters down, and a Ranger certainly has quite a few tools to do this. If you're prepared to get up close and personal, we have a skill called Electrocuting Rod. First, jump over the enemy and shoot it into them. Once the rod's in place, any lightning damage they take will build up a special electrocute gauge. Once the gauge is full, the monster is totally suppressed, allowing you to kill them easily. Now sometimes when you use electrocuting rods, the enemy dies before you get a chance to electrocute them. I think there's another support you might add to my lightning arrow to fix this problem. Neural overload will make it easier to electrocute enemies. If the skill it's attached to puts them over 50% of their electrocute bar, it will trigger instantly. Now this skill works really well for suppressing a single large enemy, but I'd like to improve my crowd control ability for groups as well. I'm going to add a support gem called Frozen Nexus to my Frost Escape. This makes an area of chilled ground around frozen enemies. I'll also add Deep Freeze to it as well, which will make the freezes last a bit longer. Now when I use my Frost Escape on that front enemy, others nearby are slowed down. But also we could find a way to slow enemies down when they're farther away from me as well. So this would be a great time to start getting into the Ranger's Poison and Plant-based skill set. To start with, let's have a look at Vine Arrow. The skill fires an arrow into the air that creates a small plant where it lands. The plant sends out tendrils to nearby enemies, slowing them down and poisoning them. But it does have another function too. If the plant gets further poisoned, it transfers that poison to the monsters it's attached to. Normally you would only be able to get one stack of poison on a monster at a time, but you can put as much poison as you want on this plant. You could just use the plant to slow monsters down and not worry about the poison part. But if you want to go all in on poison, this is the way to do it. Now if you do want to focus on poisons more, another useful skill is Poison Bloom Arrow. This skill creates these plant pustules on the ground. If you wait a little while, they'll explode. Just like any other plant skill, these plants respond well to poison. Shoot the poison burst arrow at enemies nearby and watch your plants grow more and more powerful. Poisoning the pustules causes them to do much more damage and makes them explode much faster as well. I can also add the pierce support to the poison burst arrow. Doing this will mean I get multiple poison bursts as it goes through each monster. We also have another skill to make a nice environment for your plants to grow. Gas cloud arrow. This skill shoots the ground and creates a cloud of gas that continuously poisons things inside it. Throw your plants down, then put a gas cloud on top. The constant poisoning will make them grow. Another poison related skill we have on the ranger is called Plague Bearer. This is a reservation skill, meaning it uses spirit. When I enable it, I get this counter that counts up whenever I apply poison to a monster. You can see the counter on the skill increasing as each new monster is poisoned. Now I'm going to fight these monsters and make sure to poison them as much as I can to build up the counter. It does take quite a while to get the counter up to 100%, but it's worth it. Whenever I choose, I can unleash the poison and a big explosion around my character, dealing a large amount of damage. Hmm, <laughs> not a dot. Now next up we have a classic, Rain of Arrows. It's simple, shoot a bunch of arrows in the sky, and they rain down for a short time. It's decent AoE and damage at long range. Now this skill doesn't last too long, but we can change that. It's time to introduce Frenzy Charges. Frenzy Charges are used for a variety of skills on the Ranger, but with Rain of Arrows they can be used to extend the duration. How do we get some though? Here we have a skill called Sniper's Mark. Put it on an enemy and it will grant you a Frenzy Charge when you crit them. Now remember that Snipe skill from earlier? That skill guarantees a critical hit. So first we Sniper's Mark an enemy, then we Snipe them. And after that the next Rain of Arrows will last a really, really long time. We still have some weaknesses though. While Rain of Arrows has enemies with a ton of arrows, each one doesn't do much damage individually. It would be nice if we had a way to break the armor on enemies so that Rain of Arrows dealt more damage. Thankfully, we have this Corrode Armor support gem, and we can put it on our Gas Cloud Arrow. Corrode Armor causes poison to erode the armor on targets until it's all gone. This will significantly increase the damage that Rain of Arrows does against armored targets. Oh yeah, and one more thing about Gas Clouds. They can be detonated with explosions. I have an explosive arrow here. Let's check it out. Now, because monsters and Gas Clouds are likely to have their armor broken, I think there's another useful combo we can do. This is an exploit weakness support. This support provides extra bonus damage to targets that have their armor broken. Perfect for what we have going on here. So, those are just some of the skills we have on the Ranger class in Path of Exile 2. Now that we've seen all these skills, let's see how well they do against a much tougher enemy. It's time to fight the boss of the Thanos. The toughest curse of madness never ends. Only 
All of this apparently is a continuation of the Katava plotline, which is interesting. Cold flesh, dirt, maggots, and ghosts. Our job is the dead. Me, you can. In the Necropolis League, you will encounter Undertaker Eric, a man collecting the scattered spirits of the Eternal Empire for a mysterious purpose. These spirits have begun to haunt the monsters of Rayclast, unleashing their ancient fury and sorrow onto the world. The Undertaker will provide you with the Lantern of Aramor, a powerful family heirloom which can illuminate the wrathful spirits haunting monsters throughout Rayclast. With it, the Undertaker hopes to employ you to rid Rayclast of this menace and further his cryptic cause. The Lantern can be used when entering any new area. When peering through it, you can examine the spirits haunting that area. The Lantern also allows you to manipulate them, letting you configure which monsters are affected by which mobs. It would be wise to take your time with your decisions here, for the spirits are not forgiven. When peering through the Lantern, you can also see extra details about the packs of monsters in the area. Rows here are considered common. Whereas the water elementals are more scarce. If you want things to be easier, you can put the more difficult spirits on the elementals, which you'll encounter less often. We've tried to make sure that by engaging with the lantern, you are able to intelligently control the difficulty in the Necropolis League. The spirits come in a number of forms which represent the danger they pose. For example here, the infested vultures are servant haunted, causing them to deal a small amount of increased damage. But the vols vanguard are noble haunted, causing them to deal a large amount of increased damage. As you reach higher level areas in Ray class, the tier and number of spirits that are haunting monsters will generally increase. Your game knowledge can help you here. If you're aware of the composition of a monster pack, this means certain mods will be easier to manage. For example, the mod that increases a pack's damage for every monster kill has no effect on packs with a single monster, like a devourer. However, if we found a spirit that makes the strongest monster in a pack deal 100% more damage, well, I'm going to avoid the Devourer. You might have noticed that the Lantern of Aramor provides other useful information, such as the types of abilities monsters use, or the damage types they deal. So for those who are less familiar with how these monsters work, this can be a great way to learn what you're up against. The spirits are constantly moving throughout Rayclast, so if you are finding a campaign area too difficult, you can just wait a few minutes and peer through the Lantern again to see what's changed. Of course, powerful spirits begin powerful rewards. There are two reasons why you might want to face a challenge now and then. Firstly, not all the spirits are malicious. Sometimes the monsters aren't haunted at all, but are instead devoted. These can grant basic rewards like increased experience, or bigger rewards like spawning the Nameless Seer, an NPC that will grant you a single unique item after you defeat all of the packs affected by that spirit. Hey yo, it's that mechanic that nobody really could fucking interact with because it was impossible to fucking see inside of the entirety of Affliction. In the previous area before using the Lantern, the more likely the devoted <coughs> monsters will appear in the next area. Monsters haunted by higher tier spirits will increase the chance of the devoted appearing even more, meaning that sometimes it's worth putting the hardest modifier possible on very common monsters, if you're brave enough. Again, we've tried hard here to allow players to customize the danger and rewards as much as they can. Aramor is an Undertaker, and you can probably guess what we're taking to him. The second main reward from the Necropolis League is monsters with unresolved anguish. Once slain, their corpses need extra care from the Undertaker, and he will offer to take them back to his Necropolis and store them in the morgue. Time to earn your keep. When you are ready, you can visit the morgue to view the monsters you have collected, and then get to work burying them in one of many graves in Aramor's cemetery. For example, we will bury this Katava's Herald. Aramor's mysterious soul experiments can coalesce powerful items. Here I've chosen to create a pair of boots. These boots are useful for my character, but aren't exactly what I hoped for. And this is where the Necropolis crafting system really shines. You'll have noticed that the corpse we collected earlier had a crafting effect on it. In fact, all collected corpses do. If you bury multiple corpses in the cemetery, all adjacent corpses can be exercised at once to create one item. All of the crafting effects on those corpses will apply to that same item. This allows you to have either one or many different crafting projects ongoing in the cemetery. For example, next time I try to create boats, I could bury corpses that increase the chance of getting move speed modifiers. To go further, I could use these to generate higher tier modifiers. Then, I could try to bias it towards being an evasion pair with this. Finally, I'll apply some crafting effects that improve the probability of getting good rolls. Now, let's craft our item and see what we get. As you can see now, we have a much better pair of boots, forged from the souls of our enemies. That's a wild concept, bro. Even use the entire cemetery to craft one item. There is always something you can do to try and ensure your item will be as best as it can be. We hope to see some really crazy grave crafts. I mean, this is probably a very broken concept, but that's just wild in the general sense of it. If you're lucky, you might find corpses with meta-crafting modifiers. These can be buried to manipulate your crafting projects in more drastic ways. This one increases the potency of all crafting effects of adjacent undead corpses. Another meta-crafting modifier gives a chance to drop an extra item from your craft, with all the same crafting outcomes applied. All you have to do is bury a lot of undead monsters. You can also craft new unique items exclusive to the Necropolis League using the system. As you explore Rayclass, you might find the corpses of famous Eternal Empire families. And when you bury an entire family together and exercise them, they will thank you with a unique specific to their lineage. <laughs> For example, the Navalius Inheritance Belt. I'll give you a moment to check that out. Plus 21 Dexterity, then 150 increased Flask Reflect Duration. Hello, Pathfinder. Flask Supply to View have 60% reduced effect, 2% reduced Flask Duration per level. Flask Supply to You have 1% increased effect per level. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. Victorio Navalius. Really, his last name is Navalius.
You can use other corpses alongside them to grant them pleasure. Paran Dispact, passive skills and radius, also grant plus five max life. By the month of Hannah's line, turn every great misfortune and golden opportunities. Mods, manipulate the values of explicit mods and more. In this case, with the Paran Pact, you can even change the modifiers it generates. This unique is a jewel which adds extra stats to passive skills in a radius when socketed into the passive skill tree. The stats it adds are randomly generated, but you can bias it towards a specific type by using other crafting effects, such as this one, which increases the chance of getting life modifiers. Let's see what we get. Damn, we didn't get it this time. I guess we're gonna have- Passive skills and radius also increase five global crit. That's a bit nutty, honestly. I see we're not done with the that which was taken. To go and collect more corpses. Of course, you can trade the corpses away to other players. All you need to do is purchase empty coffins from the Undertaker and use them on your corpses in the morgue, which will itemize them. Another item in the Necropolis League that you can find are Embers of the Old Flame. These are monster spirits that remain living in the Old Flame, a powerful ancient artifact of Rayclast, and you can set them free by placing them in the Lantern of Aramor and defeating them. These Embers drop throughout Rayclast as itemized packs of monsters. You are able to use these packs to replace the packs <sighs> in areas. For example, we have found this Old Flame Ember of Tarfor. We can now go to enter the next area and replace one of the monster packs in here. You can see we have also gotten one of the devoted modifiers to appear. We can pair up the Karui ancestors with this modifier, making them even more rewarding. Let's go ahead and replace the tentacle miscreations. However, when replacing packs, you want to double check their density, as the new pack will inherit the density of the replaced pack. The Karui ancestors we have now added to our area can even drop basic variations of tattoos. If you aren't aware, this is an item type from the Trial of the Ancestors League, which can be used on passive. Hey yo, y'all wild for that! To change what they do. There are many different types of itemized packs. You can find Breach and Legion monsters that drop splinters, untainted packs that provide insane amounts of experience, and even simple frogs, which can be used to replace difficult monsters to make life easier. And of course, these Ember monsters can be raised to specters too. A mal. Finally, let's discuss how this league works in in-game maps. Each in-game map will allow you to manipulate it using the lantern on the map device UI. However, instead of randomly cycling every few minutes, it is fixed to that map. Once you view the map through the lantern, you cannot remove it from the map device, so you can't trade that map away now that you've seen it is too difficult for you, or has monsters in it that you'd rather avoid, like porcupines. We're also trying something new this time around. During the Necropolis League, there will be support for the league on the Atlas Passive Tree. Multiple pluses will be there, allowing you to enhance the gameplay, customize it, and even change its behavior in meaningful ways. Interesting. One way that you can change the crafting in a meaningful way is with the Prospero's Wager Keystone. All corpses resolved anguish in your maps have a reveals random craft when buried. Okay. With this keystone, all the That's a faster way to get find your crafts. Monsters with unresolved anguish come with this crafting modifier, which causes them to generate a random craft when buried. This means instead of pre-planning your crafts, you have to adapt to them on the fly to get the best results. Be okay. Not the way I thought it was. So instead, it's a random chance to just find something and make use of it. These pluses will not be available in standard league. In three True. Before we've made a plethora of changes to the endgame. We're introducing new bosses, adding another tier of maps, and streamlining the Atlas. The most difficult and most rewarding content in Path of Exile can be found in Uber Pinnacle bosses, such as the Maven and the Searing Exile. Currently, the only way to access these bosses is by allocating specific keystones on the Atlas Passive Tree. While this system offers a nice element of control, it causes a problem. Rewards and access to the non-Uber variants are now economically priced around the rewards of the Uber fights. This means it is wasteful to run the non-Uber variants instead of simply selling them. Another problem that we noticed is the True. difficulty jump between the Pinnacle and Uber Pinnacle content was relatively large. Because they're fucking broken as fuck, and many of them have gone unbalanced for years. Especially serious. And there wasn't obvious content that could bridge this gap. Many players would give up on their characters before being able to defeat the Uber Pinnacle bosses. Because there is no direct power scale line between these things, and they feel that if they're not playing on Trade League, they can't make powerful items and weapons, because the majority of streamers that are abusing the marketplace, and Forbidden Trove, making the marketplace impossible to actually snipe items on, makes it so that if people really don't actually know how to build things, they don't know how to fight things. It is the most cancerous bit of gameplay in existence. People already have hard enough a time rolling a fucking build. Now they have to roll not just a league starter, but a bosser. And then on top of that, they have to learn the mechanics of said boss and find out, oh, my build that I chose as my bosser can't actually do this boss well. It's an annoying fucking sentiment that requires them to do a level of work that while you could justify, hey, that's just how things work, it's not good. It could be better. Or we'll be making some changes to this. We are removing the keystones that give access to the Uber Pinnacle bosses from the Atlas Tree, and instead we'll be adding a new set of fragments that give you access to this content. Where do you okay. Do you get these fragments? We are adding a new tier of maps, tier 17 maps, which not- Lord have mercy, Valdo's got a revenge! Not only give you access to the Uber Pinnacle content, but also test your characters in new ways. They feature a new set of bosses, Uber monsters, and a new tier of modifiers that can roll on the maps. There are five new tier 17 maps in total. New set of bosses, Uber monsters, and a new tier of mod- Monsters cannot be stunned. Cannot reduce low base value on action speed or movement. Players have 80% less recovery rate of life from energy shields. 90% reduced effect of non curse ores from skills. Volatile cores. Rare and unique monsters remove 10% of life mana and energy shield on hit. An area contains drowning orbs. That is a build that would kill anything that does multi hits. Especially if it doesn't have any form of leech. Modifies that can roll on the maps. 
There are five new tier 17 maps in total, with some surprising boss fights at the end. We'll look at a couple today, and the rest you'll have to discover for yourself. First, we have the Citadel map. This map contains an ancient Kalgurian Citadel. You will encounter many expedition monsters as the signature packs throughout the map. At the end, you will fight Uber Uhtred. This is a version of a boss from Expedition League, with all its abilities and mechanics enhanced. Uber Uhtred will even be able to summon two other expedition bosses to aid it during the fight. Secondly, we have the Fortress map. This map is an impregnable fortress, guarded by monsters from the Heist League. At the end, you will encounter an Uber version of the Unbreakable. Again, it has enhanced abilities and mechanics you have to learn and overcome. Each of the tier 17 map bosses has a chance to drop a unique item, allowing for some target farming. However, these aren't entirely new unique items. Instead, we've taken other unique items, removing them from the core drop pool, and rebalancing them to fit here. Okay. Like. One example is this reworked version of Wraith Lord. Okay. Four bezel sockets. Fair. It was a weak fucking item. It had no purpose. 148, so it's probably a maximum of 150 energy shield. Okay. Plus two levels to all skill gems. O oh, skill. Wonderful. You love it. Plus one to maximum number of specters per ghastly socket jewel. You cannot have non specter minions. So. The base of Summon Specter, I believe, if I'm not crazy. The Summon Harbinger should be different from Summon Specter. It should be a max cap at base level at 2. Who's getting the chance to have up to 6? It has 4 Abyss Sockets, and allows you to summon an additional Specter for each Ghastly Eye Jewel socketed into it. Another example is Mana Storm. This has been rebalanced to Ah, yes, one of the shittiest shields in the game. Plus spell damage. Mana. Increased mana regen. Gaining mana on kill. Increased mana recovery from blasts. When you cast a spell, sacrifice all mana to gain maximum lightning damage equal to 50% of sacrifice mana for 4 seconds. It's a lot more damage than before, alongside some more impactful mana stats. If you can get lucky rolls. Alongside adding tier 17 maps, we have also changed the Uber Pinnacle bosses to have completely distinct unique item drop pools from their non-Uber counterparts. This means there is a reason to farm both versions. Let's take a look at the Shaper versus the Uber Shaper. The Shaper will drop these uniques. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, let's see your fucking brain. So, Shaper's gloves, Shaper's boots. I don't recognize that necklace. It's probably new. I don't recognize that flask, but that's probably Dying Sun. Walker, Shaper's touch, Solstice Vigil, and Dying Sun. Correct. Whereas the Uber Shaper will drop these. Echoes of Creed. Okay, so we're moving the items around and basically giving people a reason that if you are so desperate to get a Void Forge, or I believe Star Forge, you must now kill Uber Shaper. Sublime Vision, Entropic Devastation, Star Forge, and a new unique belt called the Tides. The Tides of Time. Uh, hmm. Vanguard Belt Base. 100% increased life from flasks and increased mana from flasks. Blasts have applied 25% increased effect. It's counted as a Shaper item for the purposes of Shaper bonuses. Life Flasks gain charges every 3 seconds. Mana Flasks gain 3 charges. Atoli Flasks gain 2 charges. So it is a way for those who wish to use belts that would normally would not have any value in their builds to change this and basically get upkeep of their flasks, as well as a little bit of armor innovation. It's of time. Another example of a new unique is this helmet from the Uber Eater of Worlds. Okay, Ravenous Passion. Strength, armor energy shield base. Increased armor energy shield. Gain rage after spending mana. Rage grants cast speed instead of attack speed. Grants spell damage instead of attack damage. Ravenous Passion. And these gloves from the Uber Searing Exarch. Celestial Brace. Armor base. Increased armor. Increased attack speed per fortification. Thus now being a buff to people who want to use melee skills. Maybe melee skill won't be shit this league. Melee hits from strike skills grant fortify. Strike on deck, boys. Woo woo, all aboard the bone zone. Woo woo. The Celestial Brace. Each of the Uber Pinnacle bosses has a new unique added to their drop pools. We've identified another major problem with the endgame we'd like to address. With every expansion added to the game, we've been increasing the complexity of running maps. It's at the point now where a player must repeatedly execute a large sequence of steps to run maps efficiently. It can be easy to forget critical steps, and it can be tiring to repeat them. To solve this, we are removing some systems, but are keeping what is good about them. The two main systems we've removed are Sextance and the Master Mission Selector. It is not our intention to delve the content, however. We have completely reworked Scarab to include most of the options that were previously covered by those mechanics, and many, many more. Let's take a look at some of them. Commonly, you might find Scarabs that simply grant access to different content. Here, we have a Scarab that causes Beyond Demons to spawn when killing monsters in your maps. And here, we have one that adds a Delirium Mirror. Each type of Scarab now has multiple versions, so if you want to fully invest in a type of content, you can do so. Here's a suite of Ultimatum Scarabs. This Ultimatum Scarab adds an Ultimatum Encounter to a map. Uh -huh. This Ultimatum Scarab of Bribing then causes that Ultimatum Encounter to grant better rewards and its monsters to yield more experience. Uh -huh. This Ultimatum Scarab of Dueling will cause that Ultimatum Encounter to always guarantee the Trial Master boss fight at the end. 
Okay. This is actually good. I imagine this means that this time when we get the ultimatum shit, instead of you fucking around with us, we'll actually get the ability to see him. Much more often on a regular rate. Does this also mean that this gives us the ability to upgrade them quicker? And can we also be able to flip them inside of, har uh, inside of Harvest? Assuming you can survive through all the rounds, this ultimatum scare of catalyzing will cause all rewards from that ultimatum to be catalysts. Instead. Okay. I'm with you. I'm with you. That's a winged form. But that would be the highest tier that we originally had. So what's past the wing scarab now? Of other rewards. And finally, this ultimatum scarab of inscription will cause all headless rewards from that ultimatum to be. Hey yo. So there's the answer to inscribed ultimatums being hard to find. So they finally fucking understand. They got it. Boy, did they get it. Inscribed ultimatums instead. There are plenty of others. If you enjoy divination card farming, you might want to use these. Divination scarab curation. Ten percent. More divination cards found in area per different favorite map. Okay. I forget. Is it 11 or 12 or 16? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So, 120 additional divination cards per different favorite map. Divination cards also drop in area replaced by those of your favorite maps. Mmm. So divination cards that can drop inside of an area get replaced by those of your favorite maps while gaining increased divination card drop per your favorite maps. So target farming becomes quote easier in all of the sets that you use them in, but it also means that you are disallowed from finding the drops that would be normal to the map and you are stuck with what's inside of your favors. This divination scarab of curation causes more divination cards to drop for each different favored map you have selected. But it also causes whatever map you're running to only drop divination cards from those favored maps. So if you want to try and aim for your blood and don't want to just farm Crimson Temple, then this scarab is for you. Let's I see. Divination scarab of completion causes your divination cards to have a 20% chance to drop as a full stack instead. For maximum Based. Limbo for me. Based. This is probably going to be a better shout out to all the home card farmers. Home card farmers. The enlightened farmers. Pretty much any skill gem target and any particular currency target. Boy, are we going to see a fuckload of the fortunate. And, hey, yo, look at those tabs, boys. Hey, yo, look at those tabs. There are now just a lot of scarabs. You might have also noticed that they no longer have tears. Scarabs are now all world drops. You man with the ego Vegeta profile picture. He made fun of my wife's titties. Yes, he did. What's up, dude? Hey, yo, how you doing, Nukem? I'm fine. I'm just making sure to tune in and look at the actual patch changes that, regrettably, I didn't get to watch all of while I was at my son's appointment today. Then I'm going to jump back into the... Then I'm gonna jump back into Monster Hunter. You can get them anywhere. Some might be rarer than others, but the intention is that there'll be a lot more options than before. And more I mean, I suppose you could say there's a lot more options, but ultimately the problem is, is that people were feeling gated by content. I definitely did not feel like after having bought several hundred thousand and then mistakenly upgrading them, that I felt a significant investment with my scarabs. I felt weak by comparison in a lot of ways. Combinations to consider. And in terms of fucking content, when it did, when it had to come to things like fucking Breach, it didn't feel like we were allowed to actually play the game if we didn't have Breach Scarabs prepared specifically for the bosses. If you want to target specific Scarabs, the trail has been updated to include most of them, and you'll need to relearn which ones come from where. Well, okay. the system is allowing you to heavily invest in one type of content, it is reducing your capacity for variety. To address this, we have massively increased access to content on the Atlas Passive Tree. Okay. Getting additional chances to get Breaches is great. Getting at potential access to anything that allows for anything, but also, we're never beating the I can never learn this wheel allegations. You are now able to reliably get different leagues like Breach or Legion from just your Atlas passives. Regarding master missions, content such as Incursion, Delve, Betrayal, and Bestiary, these two are now accessible with Scarabs and have more reliable investment options on the tree. Not only this, you can now get Jun, Einha, Alpha, and Nico to appear together in the same map. Hooray! We have also removed some keystones such as Wandering Path, Grand Design, and Growing Hordes. <sighs> Salute, boys. We're no longer juicing, boys. Blame every single person who bought a private league and cry and complain about having plus one projectile or bragged about plus one projectile. We lost Grand Design. We lost Wandering Path. We're we lost Growing Hordes. We no longer are there. 
but it also looks like particular inspector is getting replaced because what is that, sir? But I've added some new ones too. For example, unwavering vision. Unwavering vision. Your maps cannot be modified by fragments other than divine vessels, which is technically a rework entirely of uh <laughs> of uh the original. Scarabs can't be found. But you are granted 20 Atlas passive points. That's crazy. Back to basics. Your maps randomly have between 0 and 80% more modifier effect. Extra content cannot appear in the maps, cannot imply influence to your maps. Meanings that abysses, demon portals, blight encounters, breaches, expedition counters, harbingers, legion, mirrors, delayers, monsters in prison and essences, ritual altars, rogue exiles, the sacred grove, shrines, smugglers, geishas, strong boxes, tormented spirits, ultimatum encounters, and Alva, Einhar, Neat, Jun, and Nico cannot spawn period so you will not ever have extra content and you can never have influence applied to the maps period so you never have to deal with shaper influence never have to deal with elder influence but it means you will have increased modifier effect which also means you will have increased rarity and item quantity along with pack size and, and indeed they did replace meticulous appraiser if there are fewer than 50 monsters remaining in your maps, final bosses are empowered by Affliction Whips. Oh, Lord have mercy! I'm getting the vapors! Full map clear. Reward with get fucked by Affliction mods. But what are they scaled at? Also, you still haven't brought back the original fucking wheels to do with the Elder and Shaper. Oration. And we have added some new notables, such as Remarkable Relics. Yep, it's still not there. We're never getting it back, boys. We're never getting them back. We're never getting them back. <sighs> they at least expanded the scarab position. Now instead of it being five wheels to get to a full use, it's more or less rather. Scarabs found in your maps are more likely to be less common varieties. I suppose that's fine. I suppose that's okay. Which allows you to try find better variants of scarabs. Mounting modifiers, which increases the values of modifiers your... per explicit map modifier based. Maps by 2% for each explicit modifier. And tainted parapasses, which is just one in a set of many that allow you to target farm specific types of scarabs. Based. These are just a few of the many new notables that can be found on the Atlas Passive skill tree. Lastly, we are giving you more flexibility in what content you want to run in the endgame. In 324, you can now have multiple copies of the Atlas tree, which can be swapped between maps at your leisure. You can unlock up to two extra trees for a total of three by progressing through the endgame and completing core content. Okay. This means that instead of having to constantly waste the amount of fucking orbs that I've been wasting, anyone's been wasting, to reset the map for each piece of content, basically, to the tier of what we had to do last league, when we were flipping between particular content on our rota, all this shit here that I was doing specifically for this, where we were flipping and making use of different scarabs for different pieces of content and marking our progress, we no longer have to do that. We can instead just have one for mapping, one for bossing, and one for give me the juice. Give me the juice. Which is good. That's good. Variety is good. Expansion and power scale is good. It's extremely good. When you open a map, you can select which tree you would like to use. For a given league, you'll never feel constrained to play in your endgame a single way. You can also label your trees to easily identify which one has which content. With all this combined, we're hoping to see new endgame strategies shine through. While playing through the campaign in 324, you'll notice a myriad of small improvements and surprises. The fundamentals of the campaign are still intact, but we've scattered fun encounters and secrets throughout Rayclast. The Dweller of the Deep has been trapped. What are these ritual shrines doing in the Northern Forest? And why are they giving me omens? Hey, yo. This device looks safe. I should definitely use this on my items. There are plenty more encounters to discover. We'll continue adding more surprises in future releases, so keep an eye out. In the previous expansion, 323, we released a large number of transfigured skill gems. These are alternate versions of existing skill gems that function in very different ways, allowing for more build and gameplay variety. At the time, our aspirations were higher than we could achieve. We planned more gems than we could make. So, in 324, we're adding another set of transfigured gems that we have now finished. High Shot, Incinerate, Artillery Ballista, Tornado, Elemental Hit, Kinetic Blast, Poisonous Concoction, and lastly, Summon Holy Relic. Hopefully those of you who missed your favorite skill having a transfigured variant will get that here. We will certainly be adding more of these in the future, especially for skills that are missing them still.
Of course, we'll also be doing a balance pass on the existing transfigured gems. One of the main ones we're looking at is Henetic Bolt of Fragmentation. As a result of this change, it is clear that the in-game potential of the Wanda Archetype really starts to suffer, mostly in the single target damage department. Due to this, we've added the new support gem, Sacred Wisps. This support gem causes supported skills to create two attached wisps for a duration. With these wisps, whenever you attack, they have a chance to also use the same skill, if you have enemies in your presence. And if there are any rare or unique enemies, they will always use the skill. That leads us into all the other quality of life features we're introducing in 324, and there's a shitload of them. Many of these have been revealed in teasers already, but here's a quick summary. We've added the automation and call to arm skill gems for being able to trigger instant skills and warcries without having to bind them to left click. We've added the automation and call to arm skill gems for being able to trigger. Load of them. Many of these have been revealed in teasers already, but here's a quick summary. We've added the automation and call to arm skill gems for being able to trigger instant skills and warcries without having to bind them to left. Okay. Click. You can now hold down control and left click to automatically apply certain currency orbs until they achieve the desired result, or you run out. For example, you can hold down fusings until you reach maximum links. You will be able to control, shift, click currency into a trade window to automatically move all of that currency at once from your inventory. Detonate Dead now has clearer telegraphing effects. When harvest crafting, the item hover will always be visible, so you no longer have to mouse back and forth. Dead roll, shift, click currency into a trade window to automatically move all- Let's fucking go though, honestly. You can hold down- This is even bigger. Because this applies to everything that you're gonna use that for, which is a total of two things. Which is just orbs of socketing, orbs of fusing. Fusings until you reach maximum links. You will be able to control, shift, click, currency into a trade. Control, shift, click. Window to automatically move all of that currency at once from your inventory. Detonate Dead now has clearer telegraphing effects. Good. When harvest crafting, the item hover will always be visible, so you no longer have to mouse back and forth to see the results of your crafts. When you use a valve on a map, the map no longer has a chance to become unidentified. Instead, it adds a new implicit. Good. We've created a set of implicits that affect the areas in fun ways. Related to that, corrupted and mirrored items can now be identified. Okay. Reach hands now open upon approach and no longer need to be clicked. Upgrades to Pantheon powers now apply to all characters in the league. You no longer need. This is the biggest change. One hundred percent. This is the biggest change. To grind divine vessels on each new character. With harvest crafting, you can now re-roll Uber Elder fragments. Hooray! Yay! It costs eight hundred, but yay! Fucking god! And they're not blue. They're yellow. The ones that people actually buy. Holy, I cannot fucking tell you how many fucking leagues I have gotten bored with trying to deal with fucking Uber Elder and not being able to even re-roll the chances. Fragments dropped by the Shaper cannot be re-rolled into fragments dropped by the Elder, and vice versa. Regarding Betrayal, we're removing Ashling's crafting bench as a reward. Instead, Veiled Orbs now perform that function. They remove a mod and replace it with a Veiled mod. These orbs now drop from Katarina and are no longer a world drop. Flasks can now be corrupted by Veil Orbs, giving random minus 10 to plus 10 quality. The capability to add extra quality to weapons, armors, and flasks has been removed from Betrayal. The Betrayal Bench craft that converts an amulet to a talisman has been moved to Bestiary, and thus, can be traded. Maven invitations no longer drop. Instead, when you have completed witnessing all bosses required to go to the Maven's Arena, you can just talk to Karak, and he'll open a map device window with the invitation already in there, ready to be rolled. Baldur's maps that granted invitations now give scarabs. No more having to waste Guardian kills to try get invitations to drop. If you have completed witnessing all bosses required to go to the Maven's Arena, you can just talk to Karak, and he'll open a map device window with the invitation already in there, ready to be rolled. Okay, so now it's just a question of witnessing the map and witnessing the boss in question, which means getting the encounter opportunity still means getting the base maps for them. Baldur's maps that granted invitations now give scarabs. No more having to waste guardian kills to try get invitations to drop. I suppose. Next up, we're going to be talking about our new league support packs. Today, we're launching two new. This doesn't matter. This is just microtransactions. I saw the rest of that as well. And then patch notes were dropped. Player balance, Necropolis League, constant features. Let's see here, new and new support intelligence gem, the attack skills used with wands, support skills only used with wands, cannot create all skills, minion skills, movement skills, use no totems. Triggered by support skills to summon secret wisps, use triggering skill when you do, blah 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 blah, animation. Support skills trigger whenever the cooldown is over. Support spell skills that are instant have no reservation, cannot use support skills used by totems, traps, and mines, cannot modify the skills of minions. Support of war cries, triggered repeatedly, and all your war cries share cooldowns. True, that's fair. Added transfigured versions of Artillery Blister, Elemental Hint, Ice Shot, Incinerate, Kinetic Blast, Poison Concoction, Summon Holy Relic, and Tornado. Veiled Scarab, which reveals a random scarab when clicked. Based. Veiled Chaos Orbs, now reveal, well, now renamed to Veil Orbs. Ashling Craft. Veiled Orbs are no longer a world drop. They can only drop from Katarina and are no longer offered as rewards in other league content, meaning that they are now exclusive. Ashling's craft is gone. 
which means that is not only a service that is no longer available, but it means the inherent wealth of availed orb will become important. So now selling your graveyards are even more important in terms of the actual <laughs> you're selling them for. Following currencies now have stack sizes of 20, Exalted, Regal, Divine, Stack Deck, Crusader, Exalted, Redeemers, Exalted, Hunter, Exalted, Warlord, Exalted, Enkindling, Instilling, Tainted, and Eldritch. Cosmic, Decaying, Awakening, Synthesizing, Reality, Devouring, and Blazing Fragments. New unique items, Minimac icons for strong boxes, thank god. <clears throat> <laughs> Using a divine vessel when you already have the relevant pantheon power from a map unlocked will totally upgrade for your character. Okay. Small improvements and surprises to the campaign. Fun encounters and secrets have been scattered throughout the ray last. Through the fundamentals of the campaign are still intact. On a totally unrelated note, the grassing recipe unlocked for movement speed rank 1 can now be found in the city of Sarn. Okay. Added 374 for more foiled boulders to your map options. The Baldur's puzzle box can yield. Four unique options that the Void Runner can, can yield. The Witch has received an audio dialogue for part two of Path of Exile. Uh huh. Shield Crash of the Chieftain now receives visual effects. Continuity. Continue doing and reading really sound art effects on environments. Very good, but I'd rather. I'd like to know what those are, but it's whatever. Streamlining the things, blah 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 Uber Pinnacle Boss is removed. Or actually, Uber Pinnacle Boss is completely distinct, unique item pools. Uh, challenging Uber versions. Successfully defeat their non Uber version. So, in order for you to be able to challenge the Uber version, you still have to be able to actually complete the encounter. Which means Uber Maven is about to be slightly annoying. A lot slightly annoying. Okay, we are removing the Sextant Master Mission Selector Systems, which also means we are removing Sextants, period, and we are also nerfing all Masters as well as the Master Selection Window, probably? Uh, because it still should apply to Kirak, no? Or is Kirak's Master Mission going to be different than the other ones? Okay, so yes, Kirak still has Master Missions available. <coughs> Sex and Strong Drop. Surveyor Compasses are no longer offered by Kirak. Existing Awakened Sextants elevated. Charge Conversation All Scarabs will be converted to Veiled Scarabs upon locking in after the launch of 324. Okay. Previous sources of Sextants such as Rewards and Legion, Ritual, Incursion, and Sextant <coughs> offered for purchase by Kirak have now been replaced with Scarabs. Describe ultimatums that required awakened sextants as a sacrifice now require stacked decks instead. So the stacked decks will no longer just be sitting there for the opportunity that maybe they drop a mage blood to be copied. Instead, it'll actually just work. Urban sanctums that awarded sextants will award veiled. So now this is a place to get those scarabs as well. Crucible passive skill that will cause an item to sell for additional sextants now causes it to sell for one or two of a cartography scarab, depending on the tier of a modifier. Two of each cartography scarab. I see. With all those maps that had a chance to convert maps to charge compasses, now I'll have a chance to convert maps to scarabs. So we're just basically replacing the effect of scarabs entirely because we're getting way too much juicing power, and it's also causing a series of bullshits that causes the marketplace to get crashed. So while it is technically a slight nerf, slight buff to everything, it is also an increase to prevent things from happening. 
Because ultimately now, since this is working like this, the harvest crafting option to grant a non-unique map to 50% chance to not consume sextant uses, originally 100% use, is now gone. It's gone now. Something happened here. Etc. Monochrome and underground forest is being turned off. Existing divination cards cannot be turned in currently. So monochrome, I believe, was orbs of scouring. And I don't remember Underground Forest. Ability reworked scarabs, remove up to include options that were previously covered by sextants and master missions and more. Come across the scarabs for different content, etc, etc, etc. Only new scarabs are getting added. Alder allows you to heavily invest in the content and it reduces your capacity for variety. It'll give you the new things, blah, 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 blah. Scarabs now have a stack ties of 20 along with all the others. Previous vendor recipes for scarabs have been removed, though we've added a new vendor recipe that can be used to trade three scarabs for a single scarab of a type from those vendored. The following divination cards have been disabled. More is never enough. Rebirth and renewal. They can also not be turned in. Maybe invitations no longer drop. Witness all required bosses for the Wiena. Speak to the Kirak to open the vice window when the invitation will already placed there, ready to be modified. So do you get the option to witness or not witness? I imagine it has to be witnessing. And of course, maps turned into Maven. Invitations is now converted to maps and scarabs. Have multiple trees, blah, blah, blah. Rather than read all this shit, we'll just discover it when we get there. And during Necropolis, we'll look at those and we'll discover it when we get there. Week changes. Essence monoliths and white maps can now spawn up to maximum tier of screaming, while those in yellow and red can spawn up to a maximum tier of screaming. Shrieking, excuse me. Screaming should be three. That figure is two, and shrieking would be one. So, Essence monoliths now can have up to a maximum tier. Which makes it better for farming, but it's not going to be that uh, common, I imagine. And this is, of course, not even accounting for Ruthless. Thus, the area reservation for Golden Spare to Winged is now replaced with it due to Transform Amulet and Talisman. Helic no longer has a safe house reward of it and is now Essence Scarabs. Varishi is Harvest. Helic is Anarchy. Jorgen is Ritual. Ashling is beyond. Hillux fortification is now trap stash of scarabs. Barishi's intervention is now a stash of deliriums. Goff's intervention is now incursions. Corel's intervention is now influencing. Sources of emanation from drops of league content are now dropping a stack decks instead. B -b -b based, because I assume they're I assume they're nerfing those as well. Because honestly, we were getting way too many of the same fucking thing with absolutely no benefit. Since a lot of those items are also weak. Class pans and breach now open when you walk near them. Blah, 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 blah. And we got automatic doors, though. Automatic doors, though. Breach splinters are now the only items that have a chance to drop from these chests. Good. Please, thank God that we need to have the ability to farm these things faster. <clears throat> Omens are now offered as ritual rewards. So omens now have a chance of being actually useful, and it now makes ritual stronger, just by the nature of offering all omens. Boys, we're going to have a reason to power form. Boys, we're going to have a reason to power form. This is feeling like a chaos league, boys. Rhoda is getting rotated. Ancient city, Caldera, Carcass, Chateau, City Square. Aww. Colonnade, Colosseum Core, Coves, Crater, Dock Forest, Desert Dig, Thank God, Ghetto Infested Valley, Aww. There's a will and a Ivory, There's a way. <laughs> Ivory Temple, Laboratory, Ooh Woo, how may I help you? Welcome, Slippy. How am I? I'm okay. I'm out. <laughs> That's wild, Slippy. That's wild. Um, Laboratory, Mesa. Aw, Mace is going too. Fuck, bro. Fuck. No. <coughs> 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 
My tank is here. Mud geyser, overgrown, precinct, race course, that's fine. Ramparts, relic chambers, there goes the doctor. Sepulture, spider layer, and summit. Which, honestly, summit wasn't that bad. People gave May thought a bad fucking rap. <sighs> Following maps, bet it. Back to the rota. Arsenal, boo. Barrows, boo. Belfries, boo. Cells, yay. Cold River, boo. Courthouse, yay. Deviles Cathedral, kind of boo. Desert Spring, boo. Dungeon, kind of okay, but you're not cells. Excavation, mid. Forbidden Forest, or Forbidden Woods, excuse me. Kind of mid. Fungal Hollow, it's aight. Graveyard, yes. Lair, eh. Lava Lake, eh. Mausoleum, eh. Phantasmagoria, eh. Pit, eh. Primordial Pool, eh? Shipyard, eh? Shrine, eh? Silo, eh? Soul for Vents, eh? Sunken Forens, eh? Terrace, eh? Towers, eh? Toxic Sewers, great for Blight. We're using a Blight strategy this league. This league, we're playing SSF, probably, and we're playing the Blight. We're definitely playing Opening Blight. And Waterways, woo woo. Map tiers and locations shuffled through the pen locations, though and not being changed. Most maps are now initially found at a different tier. Some of the map bosses required to defeat your pantheon powers have changed as a result of these atlas classes, but they always do. Crafting recipes are really easily unlocked at maps that have been removed and now found within other maps currently on the map list. True, true. Divination cards found new homes as a result of the atlas changes. Dentalmen cannot be found in Arsenal. Insatiable now found in Mineral Pools. And Tyler's Extractor now found in Foundry and Forge of the Phoenix. Excuse me? Ten oils in Foundry? That better not be a low-tier map. That better not be a low-tier map, boys, because I'm going to farm it. <laughs> Karak mods. Typically, the availabilities of blah, 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 blah. All the options that were usually rotated in and out are now available at the map devices, unlocking as your map completion bonuses increase. So we're no longer rotating the choices, we're actually just allowing them to just exist. But they're gonna cost us. Okay, that's fine. That's completely fine, including Fortune of Favor still costing three. Let's go. Anarchy, two. Torment, two. Domination, three. Essence, three. That's pretty fair. And we're probably gonna abuse the shit out of the Essence. Blight, four. Four. But please tell me that we still at least have access to making it free or lower. Because Blight from 4 to 2 is more than easily done. Ritual, 4. Beyond, it's now 5. That's crazy. Heist, 5. Legion, 5. Ultimatum, 5. Honestly, thank God. Abysses, 6. Breach, 6. Expedition, 6. Honestly, Expedition should be a 4. And then make ultimatum a 7, honestly. Harvest is a 6, too. It should be a 7. Harbinger is a 6. <clears throat> Delirium is a 7. So we're making them more cost-effective by making them lower and thus more accessible. Player balance. <coughs> mm -mm. Soul Eater buff reworked. That was going to happen eventually, boys. Maximum number of 45 souls, each soul providing 5 increased attack speed for monsters. This buff also applies 2% less damage taken per soul consumed. One soul is lost every half second when you have not gained any souls recently. Does this actually account to the monsters too? Do they lose souls over time as well? Maximum chance of lock attack damage or spell damage can longer be raised above 90%. That's fair. Honestly, that's fair. You have to have entropy. <clears throat> Unholy Might buff is no longer 30% of physical as extra chaos. It is now 100% of physical converted to chaos damage and 25 chance to apply wither. This is a buff, even though people would claim that it's a, you would say that's a nerf in like general t tiers. The reason why is because 30% of physical damage is extra chaos, but the actual way that you apply it on Holy Might hasn't changed, it seems. So, Huey Wiki. Unholy Might. They've already updated the change. <clears throat> but look at the ways that this gets converted. Look at the way that physical damage converted to chaos damage happens and 25% chance of Withered is done. Extractor Mentis. 5% chance to grant Unholy Might to near enemies. 
10% chance to grant Unholy Might for 10 seconds on kill. 10% chance on a level 16 necklace. Sin's Rebirth. A flask. Unholy Might during the effect. Immunity to ignite for 4 seconds if used while ignited. Remove all burning while used. The ability to extend this is big because this is a base amount of 8 seconds, which means it can get up to 10. But the fact that getting this is probably a drop from the place, is it not? No, it's just been in, it's just been inserted into the game, based. So it is an unholy might flask. Period. It can be dropped anywhere. It can be created by Jack in the Box, Singular Incubator, or the Void. Which means incubators are actually kind of based if you can be able to get this, because this is just unholy might. Fuck you. Which, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, physical damage with smoke cloud as an evasion stib knight flask means that Chaos Bow Builds are a fucking go. Chaos Bow Builds, physical tornado shot bow builds, are a fucking go. Yes, sir. Any build that puts this in with a... Well, actually, you can't do that with a mage blood. But imagine if you could. But anything that extends the use time of your flasks... Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, but I'm not done. This also means Shadow and Dusk. Gain on Holy Might for three seconds on Rampage. That's three seconds, bro. Not a great choice. On Holy Might for four seconds on a Critical Strike, but this is actually more sustainable. But this is physical damage with increased Critical Strike chance, along with Power Charge when you stun with Elemental Damage. So you're getting a double. You're getting technically a flip here. You're getting increased elemental damage with whatever Krui's death hand will be used with, but you're also getting elemental pike. So you're getting physical and elemental, now getting flipped into chaos, so it's now elemental in chaos with increased crit with power charge generation. So double dip crit as well as sustaining unholy as you crit. So as long as you have enough physical projectile, and you pair this with, say, something like physical on fire, you can be stupid. It can get nutty. You can be dumb. It will be wild. Then you have the iron mass. Inflict withered for two seconds on hit with his weapon. Outright unholy might, which means everything will always be chaos. Summon skeletons and warriors and soldiers wield this weapon in your main hand. Summon skeletons and warriors and soldiers deal triple damage with this weapon if you hit with this weapon recently. So this is kind of like a half-in, half-out caster weapon. Especially with summon skeletons. That's gonna be crazy poison belts. Then, of course, broken faith. You have owned holy might while you have no energy shield. You increase your armor while you have no energy shield. You create profane ground instead of consecrated. Interesting. Scum and skeletons get their attack values rewritten by the base damage, base attack speed, and base crit chance. My device is running out of power. I need to put it on the charger. Level 20 skeleton does 1,021 by default. Where on PoE Ninja do we rate the iron mass? The Iron Mass is a 47, uh, Gladius. Okay. That's an accessible weapon if we can find it. Actually, excuse me. It's drop restricted. Obtained from security displays in the final reward rooms of any Grand Heist. I see. I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. So that's Harvest. Or, excuse me, that's Heist. Essentially, skeletons level 20 and above have slightly more base DPS, but the Iron Mass easily outscares some sources with added damage. 
Examples would be Added Chaos and Awakened Added Chaos, as well as a Covenant for its 29 version of Added Chaos, which is crazy. <laughs> Abyss Jewels with Minion Steel percent to percent additional damage type. Anything with sources of flat damage, such as Envy, which I believe come from the drop on versions of things such as All's Uprising. Grasping Mail, The Elder, and a Legacy United in Dream. And then 25 is Severed in Sleep and United in Dream. I don't think we can duel with this, though. Growling Cly is also a choice, which adds damage to your main weapon hand and then has a additional effect on your minions and exerts the next five melee attacks that you perform. With him dealing more damage per affected ally. And then carrying buff. <coughs> well, that's gonna be nutty. That's definitely gonna be nutty. La, 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 la. If you can find ways to make Unholy Might work for you, it will be very, very big. La 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 la. Uh, Monster Life and Tier 17 maps no longer apply to the lives of corpses in the maps. Absolutions and Inspiring, Animated Guards, bunch of Skill Gem Changes that I don't necessarily care about. Explosive Coction of Destruction will be crazy, has a 10% increased crit strike chance, that's wild. Explosion, Essence Dream of Desperation, uh-huh, a bunch of other shit. I'll figure all those out when we get to those weapons and items when we drop them. Summon Sentinels of Radiance, granted by the Radiant Crusade passive in the Guardian, will now deal fire damage equal to 20% of its maximum life to per second enemies, and a base radi radius of 4 meters, 30, thir previously 30% of it maximum life, and a base radius 4.5. So it's getting a 10% nerf. Minus aggression ascendancy. No longer causes minions to have 10% increased move speed, attack speed, cast speed, or causes them to deal 30% damage. It now causes them to deal 10% more and have 20% more maximum life. Sag. Bone Berry Ascendancy no longer grants level 20 bone armor and no longer for life 2%. Use recovery rate per minion up to 20, or minions have 20 life. It now provides 40 life as extra added energy shield and 1% of damage dealt by your minions leads to you as life. Which was, of course, the gutting that people could ri fucking cried about on stream. Call to Arms Keystone Passive, renamed to Warlords Coro. Warlords no longer exert attacks. And War Cries also grant to buff to nearby allies, previously using War Cries as instant, and War Cries share their cooldown. I mean, they grant their buffs to nearby allies means that people can now make use of things like Corrupting Cry on their allies. They don't exert your attacks, but that also doesn't mean that things like, mm, for example, let's say you have generals, you produce enemies, general is considered a rallying cry, rallying cry can be used in combination with other things. Because the war cries no longer share the cooldown, you can use them all at the same time, and now you can have minions that are dealing corrupting buff as you move through packs. A bit crazy. New Energy Shield Mastery, 50% of your Energy Shield is granted to your Stun Threshold. Placing Stun Threshold is based on 60% of your Energy Shield instead of life. New Mind Mastery, Detonate Mines triggered while you're moving, which places gain 5 increased area effect for each mine, which was mainly useless. Or Thought Notable, no longer has 50% increased mana regen, and now has 30% increased maximum mana. Small Passive Prior now has 10 increased maximum mana, and now has 10 increased maximum mag uh, mana regeneration. Dreamer Notable Passive no longer has increased mana, now has 30 increased generation rate, previously 15. Uh, unique item changes, Royal Cash's Impatience no longer provide 30 movement speed. It affects existing versions. Royal Cash's Impatience is of course the ones where you're counted as having your maximum charges, but you no longer get move speed with them, Sag. Soul Ascension Unique Gloves no longer have you lose Eaten Soul every 3 seconds while no unique enemy is in your presence or maximum 50 Eaten Souls and now has Eat a Soul when you hit a rare enemy and unique enemy no, long, no more than once per every half second. Previously when you hit a unique enemy no more than once a second. Apply to your existing versions of the unique but you'll need to use a Divine Lord to update to the point five value. New versions have negative 10 to 10 maximum number of Eaten Souls. Extractor Mentis now provides 10% chance to gain Chaotic Might. So it's already being changed, period. 
Chaotic Might is now being changed into the original ver into the version <clears throat> that was Unholy Might. So you still get to have Extractor Mentis do Extractor Mentis things, but your ability to make, get access to that is going to be limited. So it seems like the Iron Mass is going to be a go-to way for sword users to use Wither. Iron Mass no longer has re effect to increase Wizard for two seconds on hit with a weapon, as it's provided by Unholy Might buff. It is now being changed to existing versions. It now has 175 to 200% increased physical damage, thus buffing its attack value. Existing versions can now be updated using a Divine Orb. Stack decks, Divine Strong Boxes, and blah 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 blah. Uh, no, actually, no, you need to read that out. Stack decks, Divine Strong Boxes, and Divination Cards as rewards from various content can no longer drop Divination Cards for boss exclusive unique items. Yes. The Void is now considered a boss exclusive Divination Card. It has a chance to drop from the Shaper, the Elder, and the Maven. And we're not getting enough void cards for that to really be considered something that matters. And again, I suppose there are people who are glazing hard. Whatever. Will's wisdom cannot be used. Most of them dropped that would have dropped identified, now dropped unidentified. Flasks now be corrupted. Reducing uh adding in the random quality value from ten to negative ten. <laughs> Can no longer be unveiled or crafted on flasks, which means mana cost from skills must come from Elyon. Actually, actually, is it an Elyon one? I don't know. <laughs> Ruby Sapphire Tobaz is no longer grant 20% less damage taken on the respective element. They now grant plus 5 maximum resistance of the element, and granting 40 plus the respective resistance previously 50. Um, that's negligible, and I'm not a person that does the thing that care about that. Uh, slaying enemies close together attracts monsters from beyond the realm, and areas inhabited by two additional rogue exiles mo modifiers can no longer roll. We're reducing the amount of modifiers that can roll on maps because we're increasing the map value. Okay. Corruption outcome from maps that have been notified can be uh, replaced with a implicit, which is good. That's good too. Considering the fact you took away our ability to make use of that shit. <laughs> I'm sad, boys. Boys, I'm sad. I'm super sad. Fuck me. Now three tiers of additional elemental resistance during effect suffixes on flasks. We have values of 18 at the highest tier, previously 37 to 40. Lower tier modifiers have been adjusted accordingly. Dual suffix modifier to grant 3 to 5. Reduced mana cost can no longer roll. We're really just hitting mana, aren't we? Adding a set of modifiers that causes struck monsters to add additional scarabs of a particular type. That's based. Modifiers found in strong boxes or innate strong boxes and large strong boxes. They cannot appear in Ruthless. Tattoo of Alico Shaman is now a 5% chance to shock, formerly 1% chance to block spell damage. Alico Warrior increased lightning damage, originally 1 to 7 fire damage, or lightning damage. Tahoa Shaman, 5% chance to poison on hit, previously 2% damage recouped his life. Let's go. Tahoa. Warrior, 5% increased chaos. Tahua Naturalist no longer provides 8% increased mana recovery from flasks. Inacora Storyteller, 3% chaos resistance, which was formerly skill duration. That's fine. Um, mana regeneration on Inacora Shaman, formerly regenerate 3 per second. Honestly, that's a broken fucking line. The difference between increased mana regeneration and a flat get this much mana back means that you could be able to do retarded shit with this, and this is already something that was inside of the mana modifiers, and that's already something that you also get from Malaria. So that's 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 a crazy concept. That's that in and of itself is a crazy concept. So yeah, that needs to be nerfed. I'm gonna fall off my chair again. Ramako Scout. Increased evasion rating. Honestly, fine. Uh Arongui, Warmonger, 5% chance to freeze. Formerly for killing blows of his 10% chance to shatter enemies of though if frozen. Provide 6 of uh, evasion. I already read that. Aroni Warrior cold damage, formerly the weak version of cold damage. 5% increase melee damage, formerly 0.1 meters to melee strike range of Tukahama Warmonger. Tukahama Shaman is now 0.3 of life regen, originally 15 life per second, which is actually really weak. The mana version is extremely strong, the life version is really weak, so this is getting closer to viable. Um, increase physical damage. Nakamahu, 
Uh, chance to ignite. Ch enemies you have a chance to kill are 2% chance to explode. Dealing a tenth of their maximum life is fire damage, which is extremely powerful. That needed to be nerfed. So we are getting tattoos in the base game, but they're going to be only accessible through uh, a bunch of shit. So that's the whole thing. That's the whole thing. Um, let's see here. What else do we have? Reduced effect of Mr. Shock. Lightning resistance. Increased flash duration of effect. 2% chance to avoid poison. Minions have 5 increased life. 5 projectile. 10 chance to avoid chill. And 10 chance to avoid being frozen. Uh, cold resistance. Effective marks. Avoid being stunned. Reduced extra damage from crit. Stun threshold, armor, war cry, cooldown recovery rate, avoiding bleeding, totem life, reduced ignite duration, and fire resistance. That's whatever. Uh, Blessing of Moosh is re-enabled. Now rewards level 21 transfigured. Corrupted 21 transfigured. Divine Justice re-enabled. Now rewards corrupted Grand Spectrum. Honestly, kinda based, but kinda not based, but kinda based. Uh, Doriani's Epiphany, re-enabled, rewards corrupted 21 transfigured with 20 quality, based. Dying English, 19 transfigured with 19. 21 transfigured with 23. 21 transfigured Golem with 23 quality. <laughs> the one I'm interested in the most here is Divine Justice. Divine Justice was disabled, but is being re-enabled. But where was it found, though? Ah, right, because it was the ones that were disabled because they removed the, uh... They removed the Labyrinth Enchantment system. In Affliction, that's right. I'm retarded. I forgot. Ba, 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 ba. So that's all the ones that were disabled last league that are being re-enabled for this league. And then ruthless specific changes, but I don't pray ruthless. Maybe I should for the fun. Fun. Sacred list support is now offered to Witch from completing sharp and cruel purchase from Nina. So wanders get immediate help in Act Two. Automation bought from Clarissa for Lost in Love in Act Three. Called Arms, also purchased for Lost in Love for the physical classes. Ricotta Arms is clearly meant for the physical and automaton for the spells. Add a notification when you unlock a new nut device crafting effect. Add the ability to control shift click stackables to move copies straight to an inventory window and vice versa. Uh, update scarab section. And then a bunch of bug fixes. I mean, uh, well, uh, uh, these are really not bad changes. We just need to get our hands on them. That's all we really need to do. SSF is going to be big. I'm going to want to be able to craft shit. Because, like, I'd love if I could be able to do this with Marcus, but I don't know. Itty, what itty, what itty. Itty, what itty. Alright. Back to video game. Or am I sleepy? Because it's 402. Maybe I'm sleepy. Let me take my black ass to bed. Mm, I spent a lot of time doing things today. Anyhow. Yeah. That time. Put my alcohol in the refrigerator and then take my ass to bed, falling asleep playing Bellatro, I suppose. I'm usually against buying copies of the same game that I own in one system for another. But preferably, I'd like to have the ability to play Bellatro on the go. And to allow Star to play Bellatro if I am indisposed. Bye, goodbye, chat. I love you.